the same yesterday, and today, and forever. The Church of Jesus Christ presents Pastor and Evangelist Pete Rowe. Thank you, Jesus. All right, I want to say greetings and welcome everybody back today to the program. We thank God, children, for all of you listening in. And we're going to go ahead and get into the message today, especially send the program out to you in the hospitals and nursing homes. And we've been teaching on the spirit of the prophets. And John the Baptist, now he came in the spirit and the power of Elijah and thank God he was filled with the Holy Ghost, even in his mother's womb. And what we want you to understand now as we begin to read, even though the people as a whole of the children of Israel in the Old Testament, they did not have the Holy Ghost. But God did have prophets and judges and a few great men that he did put his spirit within them and they would be moved upon by the Holy Ghost and they would foretell and prophesy of the things that we're seeing happening now. And thank God we're in the kingdom age of the church. We're in the time that Daniel's prophecy was fulfilled whenever the stone become a great mountain and filled the earth. And of course that stone is Jesus Christ. And thank God the Holy Ghost is what fills the earth today. So we're going to begin now today out of the book of Second Peter for a, a few minutes about the first chapter. And I want you to listen as I begin at about verse 13. And I want to show you now how God used the prophets of the old Bible. And if you remember now in the book of Hebrews, the Bible said in verse 1, God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spoke in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. See? Now, the next part of that verse said, but he hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, and by whom also he made the world. So now, what the book of Hebrews, and of course I believe Paul's a writer, in the book of Hebrews, and Hebrews was Israelites who he's speaking to, but of course us too, but he said, in this book, now God at sundry times and in divers manners spoke in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. And that's the Old Testament. Okay? But has in these last days spoken unto us by his Son. And his Son is the one that he appointed heir of all things and by whom also he made the world. So, children, we've showed you this before. Jesus was not only the Son of God, the only begotten Son, but that only begotten Son was the Word made flesh, or God manifest in the flesh. See? Now, children, this is the great understanding that God has given to the end times. And we need to recognize that Bible said, but unto the Son is appointed heir of all things. Which means Jesus is chosen for the final fulfillment. And he was in the world, the world was made by him, and the world didn't know him. So we've got to understand now, Peter, before he was to decease, he said, I think it meet as long as I'm in this tabernacle, see, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance, knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ has showed me. So Peter said, moreover, I will endeavor that you may be able after my decease, to have these things always in your remembrance. So that's why they wrote these letters. Now watch verse 16. For we have not followed cunning devised fables, see, when we made known unto you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Notice that. 
For he received from God the Father. And as we're going on, I'm going to show you that Jesus definitely did have a father. But now his father was not like most of the world's teaching. That's where people's failing to understand because Jesus was the only child that was begotten of the Father. Now, his Father could not be in a person or flesh and blood because he was born not of blood or will of flesh or will of man, but of God. That was talking about not born of natural parents. See, Jesus was the only child that was ever put in the womb of a little virgin by the Holy Ghost. And that's his father. Now, when it said he received from God the Father, that's the Holy Ghost. Honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellency glory. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven, we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. Listen to this. We have a, also a more sure word of prophecy. Whereunto you do well that you take heed as a light that shines unto a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Now, here's what I'm getting to. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. There's not just one man that has this control. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke Thank God, as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So you see, children, we've got some great men of God in this Bible. And it was the Holy Ghost that would move up on them and prophesy the coming of our Lord. So man, in his own teachings, his own mind, will fail every time. So let's go, if you will, then, to the book of First Peter, chapter 1. And I want you to listen a little bit now as we speak not only concerning his people, but also the same anointing in the church today that was in these good prophets. Okay, now if you will go with me to the book of First Peter chapter 1, and let me just start at verse 2. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace be unto you, and peace be multiplied. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy, now watch this, has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Listen to verse 4. To an inheritance, see, incorruptible and undefiled, and that fades not away, reserved in heaven for you. So children, see if in this life only we got hope. We're just men most miserable, but thank God through the Spirit of God and His Word, then we have eternal life abiding. Okay, now watch what the Bible said. To an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that fades not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept, now here's the key of it, by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Wherein you greatly rejoice, for, though for now for a season, if need be. You're in heaviness through manifold temptations. That the trial of your faith, notice this, being much more precious than of gold that perishes though it be tried before, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you love, and whom through, though now you see him not, yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable, thank God, and full of glory. Now, he's talking here 
about born-again people receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your soul. Listen to verse 10. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Searching what or what manner of time, now listen to this, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them, come on, did it say the Spirit of Christ was in them, did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. Unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven which things the angels desire to look into. So now, did these men let us know that they spoke, holy men spoke, by the same Holy Ghost that moved up on the prophets. Now children, the Bible teaches us that what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did testify about his suffering. Now, one thing we need to understand, they, the Old Testament prophets, did not have a temporary Holy Ghost in them. They had the Holy Ghost in them and there would be times that the anointing of God or the Holy Ghost would come upon them, see? And show them things and events that was coming. So the, God never did, children, never did. Just temporarily give anybody the Spirit and then jerk it about at, back out of them and then let it come back and go in them again. Now, He gave, gave it to these prophets and it stayed in them until they were taken out of here. Now, in some cases, some may have failed. Saul, you know, was brought out of his kingdom. But nevertheless, children, David was a good king that spoke by the Holy Ghost. See? Now, remember Jesus asked the question. He said, how say the scribes that Elias, or I'm sorry, how say the scribes that Christ is David's son? When David in the Spirit called Christ his Lord, saying, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand until I make your foes your footstool. And Jesus said, If David called Christ his Lord, whence then is he his son? So, you see, children, even though Jesus was called son of David, that was because David was the one that God chose as the man after his own heart and would fulfill all his will. Jesus was called son of man because he was birthed a man into this world, see? He's called the son of God and the only begotten because it was the Holy Ghost that overshadowed Mary and put him in the womb. So children, we've got to understand now the Holy Ghost was even in the Old Testament prophets. And the good news is when old Paul was on that road to Damascus and that light shined about him, he said, Who are you, Lord? Well, the Lord told him, I'm Jesus. And then, of course, Paul got converted. And listen now what he did. In the 10th chapter of the book of 1 Corinthians, Paul told the brethren back there. Now, let me just take you to it. Concerning that rock that they ate and drank of in the wilderness and children, that rock definitely was Jesus Christ and it was called that spiritual rock that they ate and drank of. So in this 10th chapter of the book of 1 Corinthians, Paul said, Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud, all passed through the sea, were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, 
and did thou eat the same spiritual meat, and did thou drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, come on, and that rock was Christ. So you see, children, they ate the same spiritual meat, they drank of the same spiritual rock, and that rock is Christ. Now, that's why it was called that spiritual rock. Because God would move upon holy men, prophets, and they would prophesy the grace that was to come. So what I'm trying to sum it all up, there is no Bible anywhere that tells you that a, a prophet, evangelist, a teacher, or a pastor, or even a lay member, the regular people that's born of God, not a one of them is in his body or his church without his spirit, which is the Holy Ghost. And we've got so many teachings in the land. Now listen to me. It's not true the way they're teaching. They're teaching that the prophets only have the Holy Ghost temporarily coming up on them. See? And saying that it would leave them, then come back later and prophesy again and said they didn't even have it. But did I just read you out of the mouth of Peter that the Spirit of Christ which was in the prophets and then at manner of certain times it would come up on them just like it does today to prophesy. But the thing about it is God never called any prophet or any person to do the work of God that he didn't first give them his spirit. He didn't even establish a church for the day without the spirit. See what I'm saying? God never even created the earth without his spirit and his person. And the person was Christ. Because if you read Genesis chapter 1, the Bible said in the beginning God created the heaven and earth. Come on. And the earth was without form and void. Darkness was up on the face of the deep. And the Bible said the Spirit of God would move up on the face of the waters. And God would say, let there be light. And there would be light. And then when God got to make a man, now watch this. God said, let us make man in our image, in our own likeness. So God always had a person, an image that he created man in the likeness of. And we've read you before in the book of Hebrews, chapter 1, Christ is the express image of God. See? He's the brightness and the glory. And children, he had to veil that image in flesh and blood by coming out of glory and taking on himself the form of a servant. See, you've got to understand, even though God is a spirit, but God did have a divine person. And it even appeared in many ways in the Old Testament. But people, you've got to understand now, there's no difference in the Holy Ghost that was in the Old than the Holy Ghost that's in the New, because that is the Spirit of Jesus. See? And that's what we read you, Peter said, the Spirit of Christ which was in them. Now, see, this is important for you to understand. They ate and drank of that spiritual rock, and that rock was Christ. Of course, they were eating and drinking through the prophet Moses and so forth. But children, listen to me. Nobody can have God until they get the Holy Ghost. I know we got multitudes teaching you that you can be saved without it. Now, let me tell you something. I'm not throwing slurs, but children, we need to start studying in a God manner. Now, a lot of times these commentaries and books and things you study after, they miss their boat. But now, let me tell you something. In the book of Matthew 24, when Jesus was saying, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many will wax cold. Well, that's happening. 
but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Now, I want you to understand something here. It did not say that he that shall endure to the end will get saved at the end. See, a lot of people don't believe we're saved now, and they're going around saying we're just in a saved condition, but children study your Bible. You've got to be saved and endure to the end. See, he said, he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. That means you're going to be saved when you get there. Well, let me read you something here right quick out of John chapter 10 to prove this. John chapter 10, now read it in your Bible, and verse about 1. Listen to the Bible here now. John 10 and verse about 1. Jesus speaking. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door, see, it's Christ, into the sheepfold, that's the church, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. Now watch this. But he that enters in by the door, now come on, Christ is the door, is the shepherd of the sheep. The door is your shepherd. To him, to Jesus, the porter openeth. The porter is the anointing or the Holy Ghost. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name, and thank God leadeth them out. I'll show you out into the waters. And when he puts forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him. Why? For they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. That's why, children, you need to trust only the Holy Ghost. Seek. Do you understand what the real Spirit of God is? It's not a form. It's not just something set up. Jesus said the Holy Ghost is a spirit of truth and it will lead and guide us into all truth. So you need that kind of a spirit within you. Now, listen to what Jesus said. This parable spoke Jesus unto them and they understood not what things they were which he spoke unto them. Well, will you listen a minute to the next verse? Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. Come on. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. And Jesus said, But the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. Now read verse 9. By me, if any man enter in, thank God, by me, Jesus said, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Now, when he said he, or let me read verse 9, I am the door, by me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. When? When you go in the door. And shall go in, that means in the door, and out into the pasture. that your blessings, the anointing. The thief, Jesus said, comes not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And I'm come that they might have life, thank God, and that they might have it more abundantly. And Jesus said, I am the good shepherd, thank God, and gives his life for the sheep. See, children... There's no getting around it. We've been taught so many things contrary to the Word of God, people don't know who to believe anymore. But let me just give you his Bible concerning the real Holy Ghost because that's the same spirit that was in your prophets and in the apostles. And that's what's got to be in you and me today. Now go with me to the book of Romans right quick about the 8th chapter verse 1. Paul said, there is therefore now no condemnation. You're not a condemned man 
To them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, thank God, but after the Spirit. Now watch verse 2. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. You hear that? For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. And Paul said, for what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh. God sent in His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin He condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, thank God, but after the Spirit. So you see, we have to live by God's Spirit that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh, now the flesh is a carnal mind, they do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Now, listen on. Because the carnal mind, see, is enmity against God, for it's not subject to the law of God, and neither indeed can be. So then, verse 8, they that are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now watch this. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he's none of his. Children, the Spirit of Christ definitely is the Spirit of God. And he said, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he's none of his. So you see, Jesus was right. He told Nicodemus, a Pharisee, you have to be, you must be born again of water and of the Spirit to enter the kingdom. So what we're showing you now so far, nobody can be any part of God without the Holy Ghost. And without it, you're just weak in the flesh. You can't please God. So that's why Jesus said you have to be born again. So stay with me. We're going to show you everything is done through the Word and the Spirit. Children, it's time we realize that we need to seek the things above and God will bless us. So be sure to stay with us your next program. Send any prayer requests. We thank God for all of our listeners. Get on our website and check it out. We appreciate you in Jesus' name. God bless you is our prayer. We would like to thank you for joining Brother Rowe and invite you to continue with him in outreach. Your prayers and support will be deeply appreciated. If God leads you to help in this ministry, please send your contributions to the Church of Jesus Christ, Post Office Box 283, Baxter, Kentucky 40806. And may God bless you.